Today we're going to continue with our architecture unit in the TechCAD class. And yesterday we discussed the house criteria and everything in class. And you will use this sheet to begin developing your own floor plan for your own residential house design. I just want to remind you that you can access your OneNote binder here through our JT Learn site through your OneDrive, which is your cloud-based savings area. So you can open up your OneNote binder and then go ahead and access our architecture tab. So we've discussed the criteria. The next step is the bubble diagram. So your assignment tonight for homework, we're going to change this thing around. We're going to try something called flipping the classroom. So instead of me doing all of the note taking and introduction in class, you're going to do that at home for homework tonight. And then we'll actually do the hands on portion of the project tomorrow in class when I see you. So go ahead and open up this page in your OneNote and read through the directions. Right here is actually going to be the link to this video that I'm currently making for you. And then as I'm talking, you can go ahead and start answering these questions. Um, if you don't feel like listening to me the entire time right now, you can go ahead and just click on this link right here, which is going to take you to a Google book, which looks like this. Um, a quick tip, do not click and drag the scroll over here. Use the arrows because otherwise it scrolls really fast and it skips a bunch of pages. And I want you to start right here on sketching a bubble diagram. It pretty much goes in order based on the questions here. Once you get to number six, I'll explain to you. I don't believe that they explained it in the book, but then seven through 10 will be on your own and you won't need this link. I will check this tomorrow to make sure that you understand what a bubble diagram is because you need to know all this information before we get started and before you can actually start designing your house. Just to give you some motivation, you can kind of see this is our end goal. This is going to be the floor plan. Um, you're not going to make the same one, but something similar in our architecture program. So not only is it going to be a 2D floor plan with dimensions, we will also turn it into a 3D model as well. So you'll have a chance to do that with the kitchen and everything, windows, doors. So that's a little bit of motivation to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to because everything we do, starting with the bubble diagram, will build on one another till we get to this final version. So what is a bubble diagram? Well, a bubble diagram is pretty much a freehand sketch that an architect will do in the beginning of a project. And it may not necessarily be just an architect. A lot of times engineers will use it um, as well. It's also called a schematic um, representation. And again, it's just a rough sketch to help start to figure out the arrangement or sizes, proportions of different areas, whether it's in the house or in a part. So that's pretty much the definition of a bubble diagram. So when you're sketching a bubble diagram, when it pertains to architecture, there's three major areas that you want to focus on. And those three areas are the living, the eating, and the sleeping. And when you're drawing it, it may end up taking several bubble diagrams. And you're going to find that out um, because I'm going to have to approve your bubble diagram. And if I find something wrong, you're going to want to go back and fix it. So I'm pretty much like your customer and you're the architect. Um, maybe I find something that I don't like or I want to change. A lot of times you're going to find that in industry. A lot of times it takes more than once to uh, get the correct drawing or what your customer wants. And again, designers will make multiple ones to really test out the different uses of the space depending on what the customer wants. And if you remember, our customer wants a minimum of one bath and two bedrooms is what you're really focusing on for your bubble diagram. 
you'll also have to have a kitchen and you know your front room and living room as well as the garage so the next thing that you'll have to do in the worksheet or in the notes is go ahead and screen clip in this figure 7.2 so you have a good example of a quick bubble diagram and if you look this bubble diagram actually turned into this sketch and you can kind of start to see it evolving and turning into more on a graph paper here as well so you can kind of see how it went from this to this with a little bit of landscape to a more detailed one here with the actual layout of the kitchen and everything the other thing that you may have a question on are what are the arrows well the arrows are traffic patterns traffic patterns are very important when it comes to architecture because it really shows the flow of the house and maybe where you may have some traffic jams and it also makes you think about you know where do you want rooms in relation to other rooms for example if you come home from the grocery store and you walk in from the garage what room would you normally want to walk into so that way you don't have to track through the entire house to get to your kitchen where your fridge probably is um, same thing with the bathrooms you know where do you want those bathrooms located in relation to your sleeping or living areas do you want people to have to travel through other rooms to get to your bathroom probably not so those are all things that you're taking into account when you're creating your bubble diagram alright so finally after you're done and you get to number seven you're gonna go ahead and watch some of these links that I've included which will help further your understanding on architecture in general and bubble diagrams and then you're gonna have to summarize the videos in four to five complete sentences and I give you some little tips as you're watching these videos number nine you actually have to go find your own so I'll let you read through that and then number ten you're gonna look for two um, floor plans that meet our criteria that we went over on the first page in your OneNote binder. I will be grading this tomorrow, so please make sure it's done before you walk into my classroom. And then for tomorrow's activity, we're actually going to begin making your bubble diagrams. I will be walking around the room helping you out. And then you will do a peer review with another student to help each other and to double check each other's work to make sure it's meeting the criteria that we've spoken about. And f so this is your formative assignment, the practice and the learning. Your summative assignment for this will be actually creating your bubble diagram. Once it's been approved by me and I've initialed and graded it, you should then submit it to your, um, I'm sorry, and take that back. Once you're done with your bubble diagram, you'll take a picture of it, email it to yourself, and then insert it into your binder here. And that's where I will grade it and give you feedback. And if you need to make any changes, you can make changes. So you have some options for creating the bubble diagram. You can actually manually do it with a pencil and paper. Or right here in OneNote, they actually have circular symbols with arrows that you can use for your traffic patterns. So you're welcome to do it right in here if you'd rather use that as well. Otherwise, that is it. Good luck. See you tomorrow in class.